and it's headphones nail. guys and welcome back to headphones neil reviews i'm your host as always headphones neil bringing you a usual episode if not slightly summarized version of the podcast um had a few things that i was able to watch and get through this uh, um, over the past week catch up on one particular episode um still haven't had a chance to start watching um fallout but um that is still on the schedule have it all queued up and ready to go so um, I am planning on watching that or starting to watch that over the next few days. Um, with that being said, this week's cover image is generated through Google Gemini with the prompt of a theme park in space for superheroes. So to start it off, um, for May 4th, we actually got the full season release for Star Wars Tales of the Empire. Um, we had two stories, um, one following Morgan Elsbeth and her rise through the Night Sisters, her backstory, and all of that, her relationship with the Night Sisters to begin with. Um, it was along the lines of the dark side version of, um, of how Ahsoka was found in her rising through the Jedi ranks. So, very intriguing story um, and very um, well done, very nicely done in the style of Star Wars The Clone Wars. The rest of the season was covering Barriss Afi and how she grew into the role of becoming a sister of the Inquisitors. So now I'm actually curious to see what happened to her, if they're going to do another season to round out that story arc. I don't remember what happened to her, but I did like um, how she was pulled out of prison, how she was joined into that club or into the Inquisitors. Um, and how she went against her fellow students in order to win and survive and all of that. So overall, the biggest thing is that it was intriguing storylines and the animation style was very well done. So I recommend watching that. Um, in ongoing stuff with good story arcs, um, I had a chance to watch X-Men 97, Episodes 8 and um, 9, Tolerances Extinction, Parts 1 and 2. And I want to say this is probably some of the best animated series writing that I've seen, especially in X-Men, because they've found a way to get rid of a lot of the cheese and cheesiness of what I remember from the show from back in the day and bring in very intriguing storylines or mature it up quite a bit. So even though some of the times you have, you know, some of the characters going over the top, it's not quite as much as I remember it being. And it could have not been as bad as I'm thinking, but it's one of those things where you have an interesting relationship between Jubilee and that other kid, um, the death of Magneto affecting everybody. Um, you still have the usual stuff of like Wolverine being himself and all that, but with the return of Professor X, you see how his loss affected Cyclops and how Cyclops lost his lost faith in Professor X, but he's also relying on the teachings that Professor X gave him to bring the team together and be a leader. And you, I mean, you have Professor X also trying to tell um, Cyclops that he's that he, maybe it was his mistake in keeping the kids at the school and that he never wanted the school to be a crutch for anybody. And I'm paraphrasing that, but he didn't want the school to be a crutch. He wanted them to be able to rise and do more with being a mutant. So everyone's kind of dealing with the kind of coming to terms with the idea that maybe Magneto was right and Professor X was wrong. And he has the, the usual suspects as far as um, still believing in Professor X and his way is the right way to do things. And people are never going to trust them no matter what they do possibly, but they can't succumb to the what people want them to be so definitely w worth watching and i recommend watching the third episode or i can't wait to watch the third episode to see how they round it out um i also had a chance to watch justice league crisis on infinite earths part two and i kind of want to say that i like the first part better and i almost thought that I had watched them backwards when I watched them because this because part two actually feels a lot more like a part one it was kind of slow even paced for the most part you would have a fight scene at the end of it but a lot of the stuff that was going on felt like it should have been before the first movie so that was kind of strange to me but I did go back and 
double check that I was watching it in the right order. So um, overall, it was okay. It wasn't as good as the first one. The fight scenes were good. Some of the interactions between the characters were good, but it was a lot more talking than action. So just something to be aware of there. Um, and as of this recording, um, the third part is scheduled to release, I believe, in July of 2024, so it's, it is coming soon. I am still going to watch that to see how they round out this um, multiverse um, storyline and what happens with it. But overall, it is very interesting to see everything tied together like this, so I can't wait to see more. But um, I do hope that the third movie brings us something interesting and intriguing to round out all the story arcs. So with that being said, I have been playing Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 pretty regularly. So um, as of this podcast, um, right around the time where I am done with uh, Paragus and Telos, so I've gone to the southern, um, um, the south, southern pole, I've met with Atris, I've fought the Handmaidens, which Oddly enough, was a lot easier than this time around than I kind of remember. So I almost wonder if it's because I'm a soldier class and um, um, I have a lot of strength, and then I have the attack of the improved flurry or whatever, and then probably that be that combined with um, improved toughness. Actually, I forget which toughness level I'm at as of right now, but I wonder if because of that combination, my health stayed um, high long enough where I can defeat them and then um, still beat them, you know, one-on-one -on -one with nothing, the one-on-one -on -one with certain fighting equipment, and then using force powers, and then one-on-five. So overall, it, it was an interesting thing, thing to see where I have enough um, strength and power to defeat them, which for me, even though it's not a big reward, you get 750 experience points and really not much else, no other benefit, but it is one of those things where um, it is nice to be able to do it when you're I'm normally not able to do it. So um, with that being said, it was nice. It was or it's good to be done with this particular region and move on into other parts of the game. But and now in retrospect to the whole Telo Citadel Station story arc is kind of along the lines and scope of um, Terrace. So I'm going to kind of try and see how the game pans out for the rest of it as far as levels. Because now that I think about it in retrospect, you know, even though Koroban is a um, smaller level, you do have um, the Ravager, which is kind of like the Leviathan. And then uh, when we're on... Um, or uh, uh, Treyas Academy on Malachor, that's almost like it is a full Star Forge but expanded to a kind of Star Forge in the unknown world. So we'll see if how much of that kind of pans out as far as far as not having as much to do. Because even with like Dantooine, you have the ruins and stuff, so there's not much going on there either. So, but then I think there was a fighting scene or this fighting sequence with the mercenaries and stuff. And there is this stuff like with Duxin and Andron. So like on one hand, it feels like the game matches the first one. But then on another area, it feels like there's an uneven balancing of it. So it's kind of more of the aftermath of stuff rather than an equal one-to-one -one comparison. But that's neither here nor there now that I'm done with um, Telos and Paragus. Um, I'm probably going to head on over to Nar Shadda first and take care of that before I go to Dantooine. Um... Although, in, now that I think about it in retrospect, probably Dantooine is probably the better place to go first as far as the uh, Jedi Order goes. Um, but I don't remember if the um, the Jedi Master on Dantooine is easier or harder than the one on Nar Shadda, so that's why I might go there first. And also take care of the HK-47 story arc just so I can work on initiating the HK level as well. So. Um, I'll probably just do that, go to Narshadon next, so there is that. And with that, I wanted to round it out with my um, Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 gameplay where I played the level Funtopia in the Ruby group, which um, before I say anything else, I, it does look like I might have to either defeat all the, or beat all the levels or beat more of the levels to unlock some of the more later um, episodes in the game. So. Um, We'll see how it goes over the next couple of weeks um, if I do need to beat more levels or how that works. But um, with that being said, um, I did play Funtopia. Overall, it was a pretty straightforward map. It was a matter of getting like 1,400 guests and have a park rating of 600. 
which I was able to do, but it's one of those things where after a couple hours of playing on my phone, it gets harder and harder to read the number of guests. So I was I was revolving by the end of it really close to 1400 and it always looked like I was underneath. So you'll see that I kept running promotions for the park to keep um, that going and um, to keep people coming. So I ended up with more, I think around 1500 or so guests and the park rating stayed high enough. So one of those things was I moved the Ferris wheel so I could have had a roller coaster there and then they kept complaining about, or guests kept complaining about the dirtiness of the uh, footpaths so I made sure I added trash cans and I by the middle of it and towards the end of it I did keep adding more and more um, um, janitors to clean the, par the uh, pathways but then also I had found a good balance with all the pricing on the rides so I was making good money to the point where I paid off most of the loan if not all of it so I think I got down to like $1,000 borrowed by the end of the gameplay so overall i was pretty pleased with the map and i did like the i mean even though the map was very very crowded by the end of it with all the rides and stuff i had going on i was glad that i was able to uh, beat it and one of those things that stood out to me this time around was no one really liked the raft ride so i replaced it with the log ride which was more successful so it was good to have that and keep people in the queue so that allowed more people to stay in the park so with that, I'll be doing another uh, gameplay this weekend with another level, probably in the Ruby group. But um, now that I'm thinking about it, I might go back and do one of the earlier uh, maps or maybe the first one or second one in the uh, game just to get do an easy one, see if that affects how it unlocks the level. So um, I'm, I do kind of read the summaries before I start. So if it does look like I want to do an easier map, then I can do that. That's still an option and do one of those chapters or episodes prior to Ruby Group that I've never played before. So, um, but yeah, I do look at, you know, what I have to do and which one I feel like playing before I jump into it. Ultimately, I do probably have to do all of them or a lot of them, or a lot of them, especially the ones I don't like and try to beat them. So um, that's neither here nor there. So look out for more of those gameplays as well. So. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, you can comment on the social media posts or sites that I'm on. Um, all of them are linked on the website at headphonesneil.reviews along with um, links to the past episodes. Um, the YouTube channel is youtube.com slash pateln01 for all the gameplay uh, videos. Um, so like, for example, for Knights of the Old Republic 2 now and Roller Coaster Tycoon, they're all up there as soon as they're ready. So look out for that. Um, and of course, if you want to get early access to the podcast, uh, commercial and ad free, um, also with a link to the YouTube version of it, if you want to listen there, you can support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash Patel and zero one. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.